Well, with just four days before the start of the Republican National Convention, the race for the White House is a deadlock. A new CBS News New York Times poll shows Trump and Hillary Clinton with 40 percent support nationwide. The same poll one month ago showed Clinton leading 43 to 37 percent. This comes as Trump is set to make his highly anticipated vice presidential pick. The presumptive GOP nominee says he will announce the choice at a news conference tomorrow. Trump has his short list down to four names. Indiana Governor Mike Pence, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions, and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. All are set to speak at the GOP convention next week, all except for Pence. Earlier, we spoke to Chief White House Correspondent Major Garrett about what Pence's absence could mean. Well, it adds to the intrigue for sure, and it contributes to the sense that Mike Pence is not only a finalist, but the most likely choice for Donald Trump. The Indiana governor met twice with Trump here in Indianapolis, and the meetings went very well. The family flew in. All the choreography usually associated with elevating someone likely to be chosen as a running mate is now in place and been achieved. And the one thing that senior Trump advisors have told me consistently over the last two weeks when inquiries about the running mate intensified was this. Though this is an unconventional campaign, this rollout and the process would be very conventional. And so if that's true, everything we've seen over the last 48 hours suggests that Trump wanted to take someone who's not that well known nationally, Indiana Governor Mike Pence, and give him a bit of a boost mm. by coming here, campaigning with him, then having the meeting with his family at the governor's mansion yesterday, all of that driving a lot of attention in the direction of Mike Pence. So if it's a conventional process and the conventional wisdom would have been that the least well known of your potential running mates needs a little boost of publicity, then the last 48 to 24 hours or 24 to 48 hours, however you prefer, really underline that Pence is not only a finalist, that much is obvious, but could very well be the pick. And not having him listed on the list of convention speakers means he might have a speech all of his own. Major, I want to ask the nomination you, as Trump's vice presidential, presidential running mate. I also want to ask you, Major, about Newt Gingrich, who pretty confidently signaled that he was one of Trump's finalists last night. What are you hearing and what could he bring to the table as a VP pick? Well, uh, Newt Gingrich and I had a very short email exchange yesterday after he left his final meeting with Donald Trump in the vetting process. And he described this entire process as amazing. He said that Trump was in good humor and very relaxed with himself about all of this, and he does consider himself in the final two. There is some sense that Chris Christie, New Jersey governor, has dropped off just a little bit, but because of his close personal attachment to Trump, you can never rule him out entirely. Here are two things that Gingrich brings to Trump. One on the personal side. Gingrich has told Trump over and over again he sees him as a potentially transformational political figure. Trump sees himself in that way. No one else really talks to Trump in those historical movement sort of ways like Newt Gingrich does. And as a history professor himself, Gingrich really knows that kind of lingo and he feeds Trump's own sense of inner vanity about that. And Gingrich has tremendous experience in Washington, knows the legislative branch very well and has been a very intense student of what works in the federal government and what doesn't. He could add all those things to Trump. So that's the Gingrich portfolio. Uh -huh. Mike Pence has a lot of other advantages too politically. We'll see where it lands. And we also mentioned earlier that Trump did release the list of his convention speakers. Some surprises there, a rather unusual group of folks for the national convention, including Tim Tebow. Tell us about this. So it's kind of an eclectic list. It's in part because, let's be candid, it's been hard to fill these speaker slots. Not everyone in the Republican Party, and that's putting it mildly, wants to be at Trump's convention, and even fewer want to be on stage with him, giving a full-throated endorsement of Donald Trump and his particular brand of Republican politics. So finding speakers has been a challenge. Tim Tebow is not only a college football athlete of renown and a pretty decent NFL player, but he is also a very strong pro-life or anti-abortion advocate and his story is very well known in the pro-life or anti-abortion community in this country and he will probably speak to his own sense of that issue, his social conservatism. That will probably be a highlight for Tim Tebow. Rudy Giuliani, that's not really much of a surprise. Peter Thiel, who is a billionaire, early founder of PayPal on the Facebook board, he sort of represents 
Silicon Valley, big business, heavyweight financiers. That's an interesting choice. And Eileen Collins, the first woman to command a space shuttle mission. That's kind of an interesting choice as well. So it's a list of people with some political figures, not a lot of household names, a couple of rising stars in the Republican Party, and then folks from all over the, uh, the sort of cultural, scientific, and athletic universe. And of course, almost everyone in the Trump family will speak on behalf of Donald Trump. We would expect nothing less. A very eclectic group as well. Major Garrett in Indianapolis. Major, thank you. Sure.